Welcome to another Spot On Chat. I'm Rebecca Monet with Zorco Profiles. Zorco provides profiling tools to franchisors and to franchise consultants that helps facilitate a right fit between a prospective franchisee and a franchise concept. I have here with me today, Christina Chambers. She's the Executive Vice President of Franchise Development at InExpress, a business-to-business home-based franchise that sells global shipping and logistics services. So as a franchise development executive, she has enjoyed progressive success growing established as well as emerging franchise brands across all kinds of sectors, food, service, sports, and now of course, logistics and shipping. So in addition to awarding hundreds of franchisees herself, Christina inspires teams to surpass goals in franchise sales by setting successful strategies and tactics in place and coaching through servant leadership and expecting excellence from her team uh, members. So welcome back, (laughs) Christina. Good to be here again, Rebecca. Oh, I love our conversation. You know, um, what I found really fascinating about you is you've done kind of both sides of this franchising idea. As a franchise professional, working in-house with a franchisor, helping them through their growth strategies, but you've also been a franchisee with uh, Great American uh, Cookies. So I guess my question is, how how is it being a franchisee, and does that experience of being a franchisee yourself um, in some way enhance, empower you in your franchise development? Yeah, I think uh, the more you talk to, to those of us who've been in the franchising industry for a long time, the more you'll hear, uh, you know, if you truly, truly believe in it, you need to do it for yourself at least one point in your career. Um, and I wholly believe in that. I think any, anything that you do, you should be all in with. And, uh, and this, was, this was my chance to do that. I actually was working for the parent company of Great American Cookies. I was the director of franchise development at the time and uh, had been talking to one of the, the multi-unit franchise owners who was looking to sell one of his locations that happened to be down the street, 13 miles away from where I lived. Uh, and, and I thought, you know, I know this brand. I sell it. I sell this mm-hmm. brand. I love this brand. The product is great. Very niche. You know, there, nobody else could get our cookies because the batter was made in house. Uh, you know, it was 20 plus, I'm sorry, 40 years old, wow. uh, had a huge following and, and it was in the food side. Um, at the time, so I'm married. My husband has deep, deep, deep roots in, in restaurants and in, in, uh, in the food business. And I'm like, you know what? Scooping cookies and selling cookies, it's in food, but it sounds so easy. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and we were looking for that next challenge and looking for something to do to, to kind of get him out of what he was doing. He wasn't too happy. I said, you know what? We're going to buy a franchise. <laughs> I found one. So I sold my husband the franchise. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I love I, it. Yeah. And it was great. And actually it was, um, you know, kudos to the company that the fact that they, they did allow um, folks who worked for the corporate office to also own a franchise. I love that. I believe in it. I think that if you're going to help support franchisees, there's nothing better than to have boots on the ground experience yourself so that when you are helping, you know, lead them through their trials and tribulations and successes that you can really help share in that and help, help guide them the right way. Um, so it was, it was good. You know, I, I agree completely. When you have been boots on the street, you've been the face uh, to the customer, your husband and yourself. Mm-hmm. It's a different conversation with that prospective franchisee. <laughs> been there, done that. I so believe in it. I, I bought the company, so to speak. Remember that? Exactly. <laughs> so there's some kind of commercial with a razor guy or something. You bought a whole thing. He used a, a razor. He loved that he ended up buying the whole company. But in this case, <laughs> in this case, you so believed in Great American Cookies, uh, and your husband having a strong restaurant experience is coming mm-hmm. in knowledgeable. He's not coming in blind. He's coming in yeah. knowledgeable, and choosing to uh, go in. Mm-hmm. So now. Your role, though, so your husband pretty much was the franchisee, and mm-hmm. then you acted in a, a support role. Uh, yeah. and, and so how did that all work out? A, working with your husband, yeah. 
B, I also understand that you're dealing with uh, um, a chronic uh, health issue. So how do you juggle running a business, <laughs> being a franchise development pro, working with your husband? That's a whole lot going on. <laughs> it's like, doctor, how do you how do you remove a rotten tooth from an alligator? Very, very carefully. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Same thing. No, you know, it's, um, I, I am a very, um, I'll say I'm a very organized person. I believe in, in time blocking my calendar, um, uh, being very, um, I guess pointed in, in, in how I spend my time. And so for me, it was, it was just a lot of weekend work was fine. So weekends, mm -hmm. perfectly fine to, to give that up for a business because we knew we were working towards a bigger goal. And, uh, and during the week it was, you know, I, I was working my corporate job and he was working the business. Um, now not to say that things didn't come up, you know, along the way I paid all the bills. I dealt with all the invoices, the bookkeeping, uh, he handled all the employees, all the customers. He actually became one of the best decorators. We did the big cookie cakes. He's amazing. And he kept telling me he wasn't an artist. And then you'd see these, these cakes he did and they were incredible. So for him, he was decorating, he was mm -hmm. training. Um, you know, we, we really, we looked at our business as, as more of a vehicle to help give back, um, for hiring people who may not have gotten an opportunity otherwise. Um, you know, we were actually mm -hmm. really connected with a local judge who worked on juvenile cases. And, and folks who had gone to jail and had a problem wow. otherwise. And we always saw the restaurant industry and he always saw that too as being such a big opportunity for folks to, to get in and improve their lives. You know, he grew up, he hmm. grew up um, in the projects. He didn't graduate high school, uh, got his GED, wow. went into restaurants and, and, it's, and he moved his way up into corporate roles for very large companies because the restaurant industry gave him that path. And so we saw this as a vehicle for us to do that for others. Um, and so wow. for me, it was, you know, I, I took it as my role was to get to know our employees, be there as a sounding board. I remember helping one of them with their math homework one day after work on, on a Saturday. Um, so really it was, you know, my role and his role both were just in that, that support function of providing a great service to, to the town, which right. were our cookie cakes and cookies. But more importantly, um, you know, providing this landing place for, for people who needed a leg up, who were willing to put in the hard work to do it. So it was incredible. Um, wow. you know, as much as I can say that my role was accounting and bookkeeping and all that, um, my, my role was more to help keep the business going so that we could continue to be an employer of choice for those who may not have had an opportunity elsewhere. Wow, that shows your husband's heart as well as your heart for the community and for those that made a mistake, mm -hmm. ended up in a system, uh, paid their dues and is now are now back out uh, mm -hmm. in the real world needing a second chance. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like as long as they exhibited uh, that work ethic and the willingness to, to learn, Mm -hmm. The second chance was with you and your husband. You were going to provide that in the community. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's got to be crazy fulfilling. <laughs> it was extremely fulfilling. And that's, and you know, honestly, in, in, in the years when we saw, you know, rent go out the door and revenue didn't quite cover that, we're like, oh no, what did we do? You just had to look back and see what, what was our goal in the first place? You know, what was it that was going to fulfill us? And, uh, and, and we, we accomplished that goal. It was pretty, it's, it was awesome to see, you know, kids who started with us who were rough around the edges and then they'd come back years later to say hi. And they're now the head optometrist at Target, or they're a wow. sous chef at, at a really high end restaurant. It was just incredibly fulfilling. And it still is. We're still in contact with a lot of our former staff wow. and, uh, and it's just amazing. That's some incredible ROI, in my opinion. It's, and I think that's so important for all of us to consider is business, yes, is about profit, but uh, we, are, we are in the ROI business and that could be emotional ROI, it could be social ROI, it could be uh, financial ROI, but you invested in the lives of others and they in turn are gonna live more productive, happy, fulfilled lives. 
I, I can't think of anything that would be more fulfilling than mm -hmm. that. Huh? Never mind, you got to work with, with your husband. <laughs> True, <laughs> and he came home smelling like cookies. That's never a bad thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'd be nibbling on him all the time, you know? I, was, I love the smell of vanilla. I, oh. yeah. You learn not to eat your profits. No, you <laughs> Oh, thank you for sharing your heart, uh, Christina. That sure. really, uh, uh, that was a joy to hear. So I'm going to ask you to come back for another spot on chat. Talk Wonderful. to you soon. Looking forward to it.